Right now on Hoosier News Source, we share what the annual IU Dance Marathon means to one local family. And find out who your new city council representatives are. We have the results. And I have when we will see a warm up after all the snow we got on Monday, as well as the forecast for the Saturday basketball game. Hoosier News Source starts now. Hello and welcome to Hoosier News Source. I'm Julia Lostetter. And I'm Jack Bassett. We begin our show with the Bloomington weather update. The first official snowfall has arrived and it looks like we'll be experiencing more winter temperatures rather than autumn temperatures. On Monday evening, snow started to fall in Bloomington, piling up on the roads and the sidewalks. With freezing temperatures occurring overnight, most of the snow on the ground froze and made for a slippery commute to campus. You may be asking if this is the last snowfall we'll experience this week. Or is there more to come? We have our weather reporter Zoe Mintz in studio to give us that answer. Zoe? Thanks, Jack. And we saw some crazy winter weather here in Bloomington on Monday with cold temperatures this week well below average. If we take a look for November 12th, the average is normally around 54 degrees. We saw 23 with a low of 8 degrees, almost 20 degrees below the average. We can see 30 degrees below the average for our November 12th. Luckily, it seems to be warming up around 10 degrees as we head into Wednesday, a high of 32, low of down to 26, altogether very below average. But luckily, this cold will not be here for long as a high pressure system will dominate the region as we head into Thursday. We can see this nice high pressure system pushing up to the northeast, bringing us nice, sunny and warm conditions throughout the weekend and luckily this system will persist pushing up to the northeast as we head into Saturday bringing us nice sunny skies just in time for the basketball game on Saturday against the Troy Trojans. You can see IUDM is also happening that day. It should be around the mid 40s and the sun will definitely come out altogether a beautiful weekend if you have to spend it all uh, outside for IUDM though if you have the chance to go to the basketball game after I highly suggest you do temperatures around 40 at 5 p.m. when you're getting ready for the game. We are not going to see any chance of precipitation and only around an east wind three miles an hour. So that wind chill will not be dipping down too low. At the end of the game, though, temperatures down to 31 degrees, dipping even lower into the high 20s, low 30s as we head into the overnight hours. But if we take a look at the extended forecast, luckily there is no snow in the near future. That is definitely a welcome surprise to many of you who did not like the snow and cold that we've been seeing for the past few days. But if we take a look at this, beautiful sunshiny skies temperature is warming up into the mid to upper 40s we can even see the possibility of low 50s as we head into next week but altogether I hope you all go out and enjoy the snow if you like the cold if not stay indoors until it starts to heat up as we head into the weekend Julia back to you thanks Zoe with Veterans Day taking place this past Monday the Military Times news organization is recognizing Indiana University as one of the best schools for veterans in a recent study the study, which analyzed policies, practices, support resources, and graduation rates between veteran students ranked IU 13th in the nation. This marks the first year IU has ever made the rankings and comes just, after, just a year after the opening of the IU Center for Veteran and Military Students. So this is a really special place, I think, for veterans and people interested in serving to study and again grow and develop and, and become whoever they want to be in terms of future officers, even if they want to enlist. I just think we have an amazing amount of support here through the school, and we appreciate that. IU's ranking comes along with other awards and recognitions to its ROTC program, including U.S. Air Force ROTC Captain Dustin Schimpf, being named Indiana's Air Force Recruiter of the Year award recipient. IU has also announced its first ever female veteran outreach program led by Army veteran and IU alum Sarah Bassett in order to create visible representation for female veterans on campus. IU is famous for many things, like sports legend Bobby Knight or the iconic Sample Gates. But we can't forget about one IU tradition, the IU Dance Marathon. Our Hoosier News Source reporter Kenley Johnson got an exclusive interview with one family and found out why the annual event means so much to them. Kenley? Thanks, Jack. This weekend, more than 3,000 IU students will dance for 36 hours in honor of the kids at Riley Hospital for Children. For one of those 3,000, it hits closer to home. Why? Because they were once Riley patient themselves. This week, I got to speak with one of those families. As a freshman here at IU, Ava Bacon's life seems pretty normal. 
However, just a few years ago, she was one of the Riley kids her and her sister will be dancing for this weekend. Um, so I played volleyball. Uh, I played volleyball all of high school and I got a concussion. So I got an MRI and it turns out everything was fine. and I, I didn't have a concussion, but they found out that I had a disorder in my brain called Arnold Chiari malformation, which basically means like when I was formed in the womb, my brain stem didn't fit into my spinal cord correctly, which put undue pressure on my brain. I was basically given the option of either take oxys the rest of my life or get brain surgery. So we opted on brain surgery and I was referred to Riley. The kids at Riley are just special, right? They're just special. And the nurses and the doctors that take care of them, they're doubly special. Because when you have to take your kid to Riley, as a parent, it, it, it's hard, right? Because you know that when you walk into those doors, the kids at Riley are not just a little sick. They're a lot sick. They have changed her life to a much better person. She is just happier, I can tell. She feels better. Ava is my best friend. She is someone who I rely on for everything. She is someone that I look up to every day. So I have a tattoo on the back of my head that says happy to be here. And it just, I also have a scar down the back of my head. It's probably six inches long, a symbolizing towards like, you are, you should always be happy to be where you are, no matter where you are in life. All of the IU dance marathons and all the money that IU raises for Riley is just incredible. We love Riley, obviously. We have a special place in our heart for Riley. They took good care of, right, of, of, of Ava, and we thank all of the students that are dancing this coming weekend and all the money that they've raised because they have no idea, I think, unless you live it on a daily basis and you live going through something major like that in your life, how life-changing it is. For Who's Your News Source, I'm Kenley Johnson. With stories like Ava's, we know those participating in this weekend's IUDM are that much happier to be there and see the difference they truly make. Julia, Jack, back to you. Two new Bloomington City Council members have been voted into office h &S reporter Noelle Friel has the chance to speak with these new representatives. This week, elections for Bloomington City Council's districts 2 and 3 took place. Democratic candidate Sue Scambaluri won the race for the District 2 seat, and Democratic candidate Ron Smith won the seat for District 3. I just was watching the screen with everybody else, and I was a winner. I think I'm not just pleased with the outcome, but I'm pleased with what we've done, uh, and I'm very excited. I've often said, Bloomington's best days are ahead. Scambaluri, who is a director of development for the IU College of Arts and Sciences and has served on Bloomington's Redevelopment Commission, wants to find ways to maintain Bloomington's economic resilience, such as expanding the Monroe Convention Center. We believe we have the, the possibility of attracting bigger uh, conferences and more professional development activities there if we expand it and have more space. Uh, so as part of the Redevelopment Commission, one of the things we did was purchase the property just north of that. Smith, who has a background in social work, says he wants to find ways to improve the quality of life for Bloomington citizens on an intergenerational level, such as funding a senior center at the College Mall. Uh, there's a senior center that they started uh, at College Mall called the Enright Center East, and I'm hoping that I will be able to advocate for and see that become part of the budget. Both Scambaluri and Smith say they want to encourage IU students to become involved in local government and feel free to reach out to their city council representatives. Voter turnout was very low in this election, less than 10 percent, uh, and student voter turnout in that area was even lower. I want to encourage students to really become involved in a political process. For Hoosier News Source, I'm Noelle Friel. Scambolari and Smith will take office on January 1st. To learn how to stay updated on what's happening in local government or how you can contact your city council representatives, you can visit bloomington.indiana.gov. Coming up, one Hoosier News Source reporter explores the mental health resources that are available to those incarcerated. We have that story next. Plus, community members held a celebration at a popular spot on campus for the reopening after three years of renovation shutdown.
Welcome back to Hoosier News Source. We all know that there are many opportunities to improve your mental health on campus, but what about in the local jails? Hoosier News Source reporter Charlie Rebeski has more about how the Monroe County Jail is working with the city to provide more mental health services to inmates. So right now there's 200 and some beds throughout the state in mental health hospitals and there's 90 some counties in the state so there's not a lot of beds for each county. Uh, whenever there is a bed that comes open, you know, there's a lot of counties that have people that have mental health issues that are vying for that bed. 90 counties full of inmates in need of mental health care. There's generally a six month waiting period to get them out of the jail into the state hospital. So during that six month period, they're not out roaming the streets, they're not outside, they're in the jail and my staff have to deal with them. Local jails like the Monroe County Correctional Center are finding new ways to help inmates who are in need of mental health services during their time in jail. As far as I know, we're the only county in the state of Indiana that is actually trying to get the psychiatric nurse practitioner voluntarily. Colonel Sam Crow says that local jails are the largest provider of mental health services in communities today. Most people think that the majority of mental health services are provided at clinics and hospitals like the CAPS program here at the IU Health Center. However, 64% of people actually receive their mental health services from local jails and correctional centers, just like the one right behind me. The staff hopes that integrating more mental health opportunities will significantly improve the environment of the jail and the community. Safety uh, of staff, of inmates, um, safety of the community, um, uh, minimizing recidivism, uh, minimizing reducing crime in the community as it correlates to mental illness. For Who's Your News Source, I'm Charlie Rubeski. The Monroe County Correctional Center continues to work with the City of Bloomington to integrate these plans into their facility. The Sidney and Lois Eskenazi Museum of Art officially reopened this past Thursday. To commence the grand opening of the museum, they hosted a first Thursday festival, which attracted many students and Bloomington community members. The new museum entertained with live music and gave group tours to visitors, as well as offering art activities in the new classrooms. A brand new cafe also opened in the museum, which leads to a new entrance from the IU Arboretum. The cafe is open seven days a week, while the gallery is open Tuesday through Sunday. Admission to the museum is always free. To plan your visit and check the hours of operations, you can head to artmuseum.indiana.edu. There's a lot of excitement around the Indiana men's basketball team, and our sports reporter Joe Cantor joins us in studio to tell us what that is. Joe? It is basketball season once again, and the Indiana Hoosiers are very quietly, they've gotten off to a solid start. So, to Assembly Hall we go. Indiana hosting Portland State and junior Al Durham getting things going, taking this one coast to coast. He would lead all scorers in this game. A few possessions later, big shot Bob Finnessy going to do a little distributing this time. He puts it up to Justin Smith, who puts it down. That would put IU up 14-7. They controlled this game throughout, but the Vikings were hanging around a little bit as Smith, again showing off that vertical, flies over two Vikings and puts the dunk down. But not to be outdone, Al Durham, they call him the hot dog because he lays just enough mustard on this one with the finger roll, gets it to go, and boy, do his teammates relish him for that. Finally, last bucket we'll show you here, Finnessy to Smith, and what do you know, another dunkaroo IU sends the Vikings sailing home with an 85-74 to victory. Now for the 16th time in program history, Indiana, led by Coach Todd Yeagley, are champions of the Big Ten regular season. They defended their 2018 regular season crown. That's right, going back to back. A new challenge in front of them, however, as they hosted the Ohio State Buckeyes in the quarterfinals of the, of the Big Ten tournament. Some great defense by both keepers in this game, as we've become well accustomed to seeing. But in the 42nd minute, Thomas War finds Joshua Penn, who puts the Buckeye keeper Parker Siegfried on skates. One to nil, Indiana. The match would stay tight until the 85th minute when Spencer Glass sent his shot off the foot of A.J. Palazzolo to seal the deal. Go on and celebrate Indiana. They are heading to the Big Ten semifinals in College Park, Maryland to take on the Terps. Thanks, Joe, and thank you for watching Who's Your News Source. To learn more about this week's stories, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at IUSTV News. I'm Jack Bassett. And I'm Julia Lostetter. From Bloomington, Indiana, we'll see you next week.